Greetings, global fans. Welcome back to the UK. I'm Jason. It is the 19th of November 2016 at time of recording, and you are watching Comic Call Weekly, my weekly video where I share with you all the brand new comics I picked up this week. Another massive haul um, this week, so plenty of books to get through. Um, I, I think I've got 21 books there. Um, you've got two back issues, and then the rest are all books I got this week. Um, I am looking, as we approach the new year, I'm looking to kind of really drop down on my books. I love my books. I, if I had the time, the money, and the space, I would buy so many more. But I, I, to be more manageable, I do need to drop a few. Uh, because, like, the rate I'm going, um, I'm going to really run out of space soon. So uh, I'm looking to kind of really get really mean and cut a lot of books. So... You may notice some books disappear from my, my pull list over the next few months um, as I try to get this down. The other thing that kind of made me want to try and put, get less books a, a month a week um, was I counted how many books I'm actually getting a month. And I was like shocked. I didn't realize it was that that high. So I'm, I'm going to definitely be endeavoring to, to cut my books right down. Um, so anyway, we're going to kick it off with a back issue. I've not read this. This came in the post today. It is Superwoman issue number three. Um, I've really enjoyed this book so far. Love the first two issues. Um, my comic shop didn't have issue three in. I managed to get issue four, but they didn't have issue three. So I'm, I'm going to be picking this up. If issue three and four is good as you wanted to, I think this will be added to my pool. I know I said I'm going to drop books, but come on, it's me. <laughs> um, so the only book I've read so far this week, I'm majorly behind. It's BPRD, Hell on Earth, uh, issue number 147. Um, I don't know if this is the, the, the last issue, because it feels very much like a last issue, because at the end, it says, um, the end at the bottom there, it, it says the end. So I don't know if this is the last issue. I know John Akundi is his last issue on the book, so I don't know if it just means it's the end of his story, and maybe somebody... I was going to write this book with Mike Magnola now. I don't know, but it, yeah, it does feel like this could be finished, which would be sad. Um, but I do really like this series, and this was another really good issue as we deal with the, or continue to deal with all the fallout from the battle and this issue. How are they going to defeat the big bad and save the earth? So um, I really enjoyed that. I thought that was a really good book, well worth it. We then have uh, Green Arrow. I've not read this yet. Uh, this one I will be getting to next. Issue 11. Really been loving what they've been doing with Green Arrow. Um, I love, like, they've made Diggle work as a combo character. I like seeing um, Ollie and the Black Canary reunited. There's so much about this book that I'm just enjoying right now. Really good stuff. We then have He-Man Thundercats, issue number two. This is a mini series uh, issue. Two of six, so four more to go. First issue was really, really good, as it, it was a great way of it had the nostalgia feel because the characters were consistent with how they were as I remembered them as a kid. But the story as well really, really was good in the way that they bring them together because Mom Ra gets sent to Eternia to get the Sword of Power so that he can defeat Lino, who has the Sword of Omens. So kind of it makes sense why he would go after that sword. Uh, and then there was the double cross at the end. And I just really enjoyed the first issue of this. And I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next. Uh, and, and also to kind of see what happens when um, the heroes from these two worlds meet each other. Um, we then have Superman issue 11. Uh, this is the, the second part in the name of the father. Which I love how DC are doing that. I say it every week. But I think that's a really nice way. You know. Because if you're looking for big back issues. You can see, like, oh, this is where that story starts. This is where this one starts. So I really like that from DC. I mean, that's a really clever idea to come up with there. The first issue of this story, I really enjoyed. Um, seeing Damien and Jonathan come together. Two very different kids with two very different upbringings from two very different fathers. So I'm really um, looking forward to seeing what's going to happen next in this book. And I wasn't going to pick it up, but... The more I read this book, the more tempted I get to buy when it comes out eventually Super Sons because uh, I, I I am really enjoying how these two characters interact because they are so different. We then have Trinity, issue number three, which I bloody love this book. Francis Manipal's art is just gorgeous. Um, and to see 
in rebuild this, this relationship between these three characters is also a really enjoyable thing. But even if the story is rubbish, I'd probably still buy this. And he's one of the few artists that has that effect on me. I, I'm very much, I go more for story than the art. And if the story is super strong, I sometimes can overlook the art. But um, there are certain artists, and Francis Manipool is one of them, who I would buy the book even if it was rubbish because just his art I just really enjoy. So. Uh, we then have issue two of Reborn from Image Comics. Uh, this is part of the Miller world, you know, as uh, Mark Miller likes to call of his books. Really enjoyed the story, first issue, as it kind of deals with the afterlife, and I, I really like the journey we went on in the first issue, and I'm really looking forward to, to building on that this issue. Firstly, I'm looking forward to that. We have all new Wolverine issue 14 which uh, is the Enemy of the State 2. Uh, enemy, the original Enemy of the State was one of my favourite stories ever. It was awesome. Um, and the, I can't remember what the follow-up story was called uh, with Wolverine, because like, in the original story, Gorgon manages to kill Wolverine and bring him back as kind of basically his weapon, and he sends him against all the different heroes. Eventually they capture Wolverine, and then Wolverine has to kind of undo the programming that Gorgon has done to him and then he goes on this like bloodless revenge trail to kind of get revenge on Gorgon for what Gorgon has done to him and to his friends who he's made him kill. So I really love the first story and I feel like it, it, it's going to come back to me at some point. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed that original. So I'm kind of a bit nervous about them doing a sequel to it. Uh, but the first issue I really liked of this story, so I'm, I'm hoping that this is going to stay strong. And the one thing I will say is I'm loving um, X23's Wolverine. Um, I think she's done fantastically well. And it's funny how like different characters you kind of respond to. It's like Sam Wilson, I still don't feel him as Captain America. Jim Gordon didn't like him as Batman. That didn't work for me. But then there's other characters like when uh, Dick Grayson was Batman. I liked that and that worked for me. Um, I liked when Bucky was Captain America, that worked for me. And X-23 is Wolverine. If this was the status quo now, and this is how it's always going to be, I'd be fine with this. And it, it's funny how some people kind of work and you accept, and others um, just don't work. And you can't, you never really get past wanting the other character back. But with this, I'm really enjoying it. And plus, I've got to think uh, the, the costume works better for her somehow than it does for him. And I don't understand why, but something about it works better for him. We then have issue three of Britannia, which I'm loving this story. You take, you know, uh, the Roman Empire, one of my favourite points of history that I find fascinating, and you add this kind of supernatural element to it, and you've got Britannia, and I really have enjoyed this. Um, it, it's unusual to have a story dealing with the supernatural set in this time, because, like, the how people saw things was very different. They saw things more as miracles or messages from the gods. So it's interesting kind of having that kind of more supernatural story set in this time because it's a totally different dynamic than in modern day. So I'm liking this. This has just been brilliant and um, definitely worth checking out. And Juan Jose Rip's art, it just I'm loving his art as well. Uh, he used to do a series I loved called Clone. Uh, so I'm really happy to see him back on a book. We then have Harbinger Renegade issue number one, which um, I'm, I'm looking for. It's got one of my favourite characters, Faiths, in there. I don't know the Renegades too much. I, I kind of, I wasn't reading Valiant the first time around they were here. But, but um, I'm really looking forward to getting into this one. And uh, I love that variant cover that I picked up my comic shop, uh, which is super cool as well. And uh, we then have from Dark Horse Comics Black Hammer issue number five. I've got three issues of this to read before I'm up to date. Uh, but the first issue I read, I enjoyed this. It's, it's Jeff Lemire. Um, and I'm always fascinated. Writers, writers that I like from Marvel and DC, it's always fascinating seeing them do their own thing with like uh, Dark Horse or Image, um, where they probably don't have as much editorial input. They're kind of more left to their, their own devices than you would be at Marvel or DC. And so it's really nice seeing them a bit more unfiltered and, and uh, so yeah, enjoying this one. We then have Aquaman issue number 11. I'm way behind in this. I really like the character of Aquaman. There's part of me that's kind of questioning, should I drop this book? Um, 
just because I'm so far behind on it, I think I'm I'm on, I'm, I'm on like issue three or four. Um, I've got to start from and we're up to issue eleven. Whew, that's gonna take some reading to catch up with that, but I like I say, I really like the character. Also, I really like Mira um, as a secondary character in the book. There are a lot of things I really like about this, so um, I'm gonna try and catch up with this and make a decision. Um, but it's just that pull of really liking the character that's kind of keeping me with this. I know last time I dropped it, um, when Colin Bunn came on board, a writer that I like, but I just didn't like what he did with Aquaman because his first thing to do was to split up Aquaman and Mira. And that's not really a story I want to see because I like those characters so much, I want to see them together. So, um, so yeah, that put me off last time. And I know that probably sounds a silly thing to kind of drop a book for. But, you know, sometimes people can take characters in a direction you just don't want to go. And if that's not your bag, there's so many books out there right now, it's easy just to drop it and kind of find something else to take its place. Uh, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to catching up with this and see how we go. It started off well. Another book I'm considering to drop, drop him, and I'm horrified that I'm even considering that, it is Batman issue number 11. Um, this continues the I Am Suicide storyline. Um, I've heard... From people whose judgment I trust, I've said that they're not really feeling this. I've read the first R. I'm up to the crossover that I've got to get to. Um, those of you just popped up on my screen. Got rid of it. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed that first. Oh, no, sorry, I've lost my train of thought. I didn't enjoy the first arc. There were moments in it I liked, but overall it just didn't work. But because the, you've got a really great writer, you've got one of the best characters in comics to write. Um, you kind of, I'm hoping that it's going to pick up, but like I say, people I've heard from, they don't think it does. So I'm curious, I'm looking forward to catching up with this and seeing for myself um, whether this is going to be one that hits the dirt quick. Another book I'm looking at potentially dropping is Nightwing issue number nine. Um, I loved Grayson, I thought that series worked so well. Um, first arc of this, I liked, I didn't love. So I'm not sure. I'm already getting Titans that give me my Dick Grayson fix. So I'm not sure with this being twice a month whether I'm going to keep this up. But we will see. We will see. Uh, we then have Kill or Be Killed, uh, which I love the first issue of this. I've got two issues to read before I'm up to date on it. Uh, but that's going to be one of my priorities as well because um, I did really enjoy the first issue. And Sean Phillips, I am kind of feel like I'm late to the party. But I really love Sean Phillips' art. Um, I'm trying to think. I think it was Tokyo Ghost. Or did he do Chrononauts as well? But I know there's a couple of series that I've read that have his art. And I'm just like, wow. Um, I really like this guy's art. He's really talented. And I'm like, I feel like I'm a, bit, a few years behind at getting to the party. But I get there in the end. Uh, we then have Sam Wilson, Captain America, issue number 15. I was considering dropping this one. The thing that I'm loving what Nick Spencer's doing right now is he's using a lot of the characters from the early 90s when I was like a kid and beginning to read Captain America regularly. So there's a lot of things to kind of go, go on in the book that kind of give me that nostalgia vibe and take me back to those days. So while he's doing that, I'm kind of like, hmm, I might stick with this book for a while or longer. Um, so I'm not feeling Sam Wilson as Captain America, but I just like what expenses doing with the book so I probably will stick with that one a bit longer. We then have Deadpool issue 22. This book seems to be regularly every two weeks um, which is insane the amount of Deadpool books they bring out yet yeah, he's still a character that like I got into him earlier this year when the film came out and I really enjoyed the film so I started reading the comics a bit more and he's, he's become one of my favourite characters in comics and uh, but I do think they do too many Deadpool books but the thing is, you know, and this is where Marvel sometimes I think go overboard, yet you f you respect the right to make money, because no business should operate on a loss. So yet you understand and you, you accept that, but the problem I have is sometimes they go overboard with making the money, and like, oh, we've got this popular book, can't we do 10 books like that? And you've got about four or five Deadpool books right now, um, which I just think is oversaturating the market, but hey. We then have Doctor Strange in 14. I'm reading my way through the run. I managed to get the, the few issues I'd missed. And I'm, all, I'm getting through those books now. So 
I'm looking forward. Um, I enjoyed the Doctor Strange movie. I thought it. I don't know if it was because I went in. It was the first Marvel movie that I wasn't really looking forward to, but I went in and I really enjoyed it. So I don't know if it's because of that my expectations were low that I enjoyed it more, or if it was a really good film. But uh, yeah, like I say, I enjoyed it. I thought the casting was first class all the way around in the film. Um, and I thought, yeah, it was really good. So I'm really looking forward to catching up with the character now. God, I'm such an easy mark, you know. Um, they make a film, I enjoy it, and I end up buying the comic. Um, but with Deadpool, that's kind of stuck all year. And it's kind of just opened it up. And I think, in many ways, the movie's done that for me as well with Doctor Strange. It's kind of opened up this character I didn't really know that much about. Uh we did have Old Man Logan, issue 13. Uh, great creative team on this. I'm really looking forward. I think I've got two issues to catch up on that. We then have the final issue of Doctor Who's Supremacy of the Cybermen. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing how that finishes out. And finally, for the new books this week, we have Doctor Who, 12 Doctor Adventures, Year 2, issue 11. And I love this, this photo cover with all these, these, these characters on it. I think really, really good good cover I love I love that and then finally um I got my BPRD Hell on Earth back issue issue 112 this this week um so yeah slowly working my way through those so those are my books for this week um I've got plenty to keep me out of mischief there as I endeavor to kind of catch up with my books I will be back for definite um uh, I don't think there'll be a comic book opinions video this week, just because it's a big Monday for me. Because I've got, uh, I've got uh, tonight at a time of recording. There's NXT Takeover uh, Toronto, so I'll be watching that on the Sunday. Uh, then on Monday, um, Survivor Series is Sunday night, so I'll probably get up Monday and watch that. Watch that Monday, and it's another four hour show, so that's going to take up a lot of my Monday. So I don't know if I'm going to have time to do an opinions video. If I do have time Monday afternoon uh, and I've read some of these books, I might do a comic book opinions video uh, talking about some what I thought of the books that I've read that, this week. But I'm not promising. It, it, it depends how I get get on with watching Survivor Series. Um, we then, but for definite, for certain, I will be back around this time next week with another comic book uh, weekly video. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you all have a great week with plenty of comic book goodness in your life. Um, leaves me to say that I've been Jason. It is the 19th of November 2016, and you've been watching Comic Book Weekly. Keep reading, and bye for now.